So as I pointed out early on in this video series, you're often going to want to initialize ZBrush so that you can get your interface and setup looking pretty similar to mine. That way there's no confusion during the learning process. And I want to reinforce that concept right now. In this video we're going to talk about poly painting, but before we get into that I'm simply going to go to my preference palette and then click initialize ZBrush. Click yes. And then we're all on the same page. So you'll notice that we have our tool palette over on the right hand side. I'll simply click load tool or you can cancel that and simply click here where you see the simple brush and we can select one of these 3D objects. So I'll just simply click on the sphere 3D, click and drag to add that to the canvas and then we're going to hit edit. Now we're working with a sphere 3D and what we want to do is convert this to a poly mesh. So I'm going to click make poly mesh 3D and we've now converted this into a poly mesh 3D. Let's choose a material that's good for painting. So I'm going to go over to my material palette and a great one is this a matte cap white. It's a good base to work with. Now poly painting or texture painting are very different from one another. With texture painting you're painting directly on the texture and you're kind of limited by the texture size. When it comes to poly painting we're painting on each one of the vertices. So if I turn on my poly frame here you can see that a vertice is the kind of point right between these lines here. So right there where my cursor is sitting is a single vertice. So we're basically painting color to each one of these vertices. So you notice that this sphere is about 8,000 points. So that's about the resolution of the paint that we're going to be working with. So I'll turn off my poly frame so we're back to this. And to start painting what we'll do is simply here in our tool palette click on where it says poly paint. And you'll notice that you have this button here that says colorize. I'm going to click colorize and this will allow us to start painting on our model. So now that I have colorize clicked I'm just going to choose a color. So here in the color picker I'll choose something like blue. and I want to just paint on the model. I don't want to sculpt. So Z add will enable us to sculpt on the model. So I'm going to click Z add and turn that off. And I'm going to make sure that RGB is turned on. So I'm only painting. I'm not going to be painting material, just color. So I'll click and drag across my model. And you can see we're painting some blue. But if I zoom in here, you can see that that's not really quite high in resolution and again I said it's because we're essentially painting each one of these vertice points just like that. So at a low state you're painting kind of a low quality paint job on your model but of course inside ZBrush we can divide our model up to millions and millions and then later when you learn about HD sculpting we can paint and sculpt on billions of polygons which really means we have no limits here in fact you can create paint on your model that exceeds what you can really get in texture maps but then in a moment you'll learn how to convert all of this to a texture map for use in other programs anyways so I'm gonna undo that and again I'm gonna click colorize and what we want to do is divide our model. So I'll hit Control D. And I'd like to point out while you're poly painting, you don't have to worry about UVs. Texture maps require UVs, but poly paint does not require UVs on the model. So right now at this stage, we can just paint freely and not really worry about anything. We can create UVs later when we want to create a texture map. So now that I've hit Control D a few times, you can see that my model is now at 2 million polygons, which will be more than enough to get some nice high resolution paint down on the model. So you can see that's very different and I have a lot of control as to how I paint on my model. And just like you learned earlier, if you want to switch to one of your different strokes, so for instance colorize spray, maybe I'll choose kind of a dark green. the painting can be quite different. Now if I want to turn off poly painting all I need to do is simply click this colorize button. You'll see that it's gone to green because that's where my uh, point is here in my color picker so I can move that back to white if I like. And then you can continue modeling of course or you can click colorize to go back to the poly paint that's already been stored on the model. 
So as I pointed out, we only wanted to poly paint, but it's very important to realize that inside ZBrush it is powerful to work with both painting and sculpting at the same time. So I'm going to switch back to my dot stroke. We're using the standard brush right now, and I'm going to click Z Add. So if I wanted to, I could then paint and sculpt at the same time. So you can see now I've got an elevation and color down on the model all at the same time because I have Z Add, RGB, and my colorize active. Now, as I pointed out in an earlier video, your Z intensity will affect how much I'm sculpting on the model, and your RGB will affect how much color is being painted on the model. So for instance, if I turn my RGB intensity down very low, we'll just put that down around 7, I still have the same red color selected. My Z intensity remains the same. Then you'll notice that I'm still sculpting on the model, but I'm painting less. I can take that down even more, so we'll take our RGB down to about 1. And you can see I'm getting almost no paint on the model, just a slight tinge of red on the model. And the same is true with sculpting. I can turn my Z intensity down to a very low level. So we'll go somewhere around 10. And then at my RGB intensity, I'll turn that up quite a bit. And if I move across the model here, you can see that we're getting very strong color, but just a little bit of elevation in that sculpting. You can see that sculpted data a little bit more if I turn colorized off and go back to white. You can see I did sculpt down on the model. So I'm going to, going to click colorize again, and then we get our poly paint back. So now that you know how to poly paint onto your mesh, let's take a look at how we can convert this poly paint information over to a texture map. Now, as I pointed out earlier, you don't need what are called UVs when you're poly painting. You will need UVs, however, when you want to work with texture maps or convert this poly paint information over to a texture map. So whether you created this model inside ZBrush or you created it in another 3D program, the model may or may not contain UVs. You can see this by simply here in the tool palette going down to the UV map pull down. And if I open that up, you can see that this specific model doesn't have any UVs. So let's just start with a fresh model. So I'm going to click Default Z Script, and that's going to load a polysphere that I can start working with. I'm going to move this over to white, and let's go back to our poly paint pull down and simply hit colorize. I'll just do a quick poly paint job on this model. I'm not going to worry about the model's resolution. I'm just going to simply click and start painting on the model. Okay, so now that we have a simple paint job, let's convert this over to a texture map. You'll see that this model, if I go into the UV pull down, already has UVs. I can see this because the delete UV button is active. But let's pretend this model didn't have any UVs or you just wanted to start with a totally new UV set. Well, you can simply click delete UVs. So now to convert this poly paint to a texture map, we want to create some UVs. You notice that you have some UV default sizes that you can work with, 512, 1024, 1048, and 496. I'm simply going to click the 1024 for now. And then we want to click one of these options, PUV, GUV, or AUV. Don't worry about what these mean now. We'll go into more detail later about what these UV options mean and a very powerful plugin for ZBrush called UV Master and how it makes the process of creating UVs very simple. But for right now, we want to use the PUV setting because this optimizes our UV space quite a bit. Now if I were to just click this at this state, we're going to get a dialog box which basically says that your model needs to be at its lowest subdivision level before you create UVs. I'll just simply tap to remove that dialog box and in our geometry tab you'll notice that we have this division slider which we can slide down. By the way, the keyboard shortcut for moving up and down your subdivision levels is the letter D to move up and shift D to move down. So now that we're in our lowest subdivision level, I'll go back to my UV pull down here and I'm going to choose PUV tile. We've now created a new UV map for this mesh that we're working with. And that's all there is to it. We're going to close our UV map setting. And below that we have our texture map setting. And what we want to do is convert the poly paint information 
into a texture map. So here in the texture map pull down, you're going to see this option here, new from poly paint. But before I click that, I want to again make sure I'm at my highest resolution. So I'll hit the letter D a few times. And then we're back to our highest subdivision level for this model so we can get sharper paint. And we'll click new from poly paint. And you'll see now we have a texture map. This might look a little bit confusing, but again, this has to do with the way the UVs are laid out on the model. We'll talk more about that later. If we were to try and paint on the model now, so I'll simply click and drag, nothing's going to happen. That's because you're not actually going to be painting on the texture map, only the poly paint information and then converting that to a texture map. So for instance, if I wanted to add more poly paint information to this model, I'm going to click this button where it says texture map on and turn that off. And you can see where I was clicking, I was actually painting down on the model. Here's a little trick to select a color. I'll hold the C key and put my cursor over an area so you can see that this area is white and when I press the C key you'll notice here in my color picker it moves to white. I'll then paint out this area that I don't want. Choose another color. Now we've added a little bit of red, and now we want to create a new texture map. Now we've already gone through the UV creation process, so all we need to do to add to the new texture map or create a new texture map from this added poly paint is simply click New from Poly Paint. And you can see our texture map has been updated. So, how do we get all of this out of ZBrush for use in other programs, the model and the texture map? Well, that's really simple. All you're going to need to do is go up to the top of your tool palette and you're going to simply click export. Once I click export, I'm going to be exporting an OBJ file of the mesh. So I'll just click desktop and I'll just call this face and click save. Now once I've hit save, not only have I exported the mesh, but I've also exported a texture map along with the mesh that I can use in another program. If you were to just simply hit save right now, or save as, you'd be saving this ZBrush object or tool and the poly paint stored in it. All the poly paint gets saved with the tool itself. 